This looks boring. Panic to a What is this? Don't panic. Hmm? What is this? No. You can't look in the box. You can totally look in the That's box. It's cheating. No. You've got to panic. Fine, I'll panic. It's a cheeky little bastard, isn't it? Can I hit the switch? switch. Oh, panic! Hit the panic! What? What? Don't worry about it. It's a, it's a, it's a panic box or what? Dude, this is good. <laughs> 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 Opacity go up is um Yeah, your I know will uh the um Um What is this? Are you panicking? Uh, Can I flick it? Easy and just an excuse to like work yourself for that rather than your own time. You'd start learning the syntax. <laughs> Don't panic. Panic. Does it breathe fire? Bad. Jesus Christ. You're taking too long. This is not bullet chest. Oh, oh that, me, he made one of these. Am I recording? Oh, yeah. This is my useless machine, and as you just saw in those clips, it's a really hilarious toy to play with, and uh, the box has a surprising amount of personality, especially if you don't know what it's going to do before you press the button and it reaches out and presses the button in the opposite direction for you. Uh, it's, it's pretty surprising, and you can like get in fights with it, and it's really entertaining. Feels like you're like struggling against this little robotic arm. I mean, it's literally one motor in a box, and it feels like there's a person in there sometimes. A useless machine is basically a device that its only purpose is to return itself to its original state. So on this, you press this switch forward and the machine comes out and pushes the switch backwards. So you perturb the system and the, uh, the system <laughs> corrects what you did. So your act of pressing the switch is rendered useless by the fact that it just puts it back. It always wants to be in this state. You can find loads of videos online of useless machines in all shapes and sizes, and the vast majority of them are electronic like this. I actually toyed with the idea of trying to make something mechanical where you pressed a switch that was spring-loaded and it would do some crazy thing. Decided that was going to be way too difficult. So, uh, but I wanted to make a couple changes to the standard designs that you see online because I like to do a little bit of research and figure out what's there and then figure out what I want to change when I start making my project. So the first big thing was that I wanted to make an articulating arm. So I've got the switch over here and the box that holds the robotic arm is like way the heck over there. So it actually has to reach out and it's a four segment arm that does the extension and there are some sliding parts and some screws in there. It all runs from a gear motor on the inside. The other thing that I wanted to do was add a little bit of electrical complexity, but I did not want to have to add a microcontroller because I didn't want to have to wait for it to boot up every time you push the button. And I wanted it to be able to be completely passive. So if this is just sitting on the desk, the only uh, power that it's using up is the leakage current uh, backwards through a single diode. So um, it's reasonably efficient in that sense, and I didn't want to have to complicate things with a microcontroller, but I didn't want it to just turn on and off and on and off, so I ended up complicating things with a whole bunch of 555 timers instead, but uh, it ended up coming out real well, and it, when you press the button, it turns on this siren for a minute, and then the arm comes out and pushes the button, and the siren turns off, so the idea is that you push the button, and it's in panic mode and then the robot comes out and tells you no don't panic and turns off the siren so of course panic and don't panic should sound pretty familiar and uh, that's because the whole box is themed hitchhiker's guide so this says panic and don't panic and the top says 
42, which is, of course, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And on the back, it says, we apologize for the inconvenience, which is, of course, God's last message to creation from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. On the electrical side, there is one gear motor on the inside. That, that's the only actuator in the project. And uh, there's a piezo buzzer and a few LEDs inside the buzzer right here. And there's one switch. Those are all the visible components. But on the underside, I've got a whole rat's nest of wires. And the, the net effect of all of this is that there's three 555 timers that control the frequency of the siren, the frequency of the blinking lights and the on-off of the siren and the pause between pressing the button and having the arm reach out and turn off the button. So there's a lot of electrical stuff going on there, but it doesn't require a microcontroller, which means that you can let it sit there and it won't suck power all the time. In terms of physical construction, the whole box, all the black parts here, are made of laser cut and etched acrylic. And this was actually my first laser cutter project from a few years ago. So this is the single thing that I have built that has spent the most time in CAD. It sat in CAD for like a year before I actually went and printed their, printed and cut the parts. All of the other parts, these little like red hinge pieces, the claw, all the motor mounts and stuff like that, are actually 3D printed and were designed to interface with the laser cut parts here. So there's way too much of this project to talk about in one video, but if you wait like an extra 20 seconds and click on the part two video, I'll have a lot more information about the construction of the box and a complete explanation of the circuit inside and how that all works. So thanks for watching. that has the net result of reversing the battery that is applied to the rest of the circuit, which means that current can flow through the motor and now through that diode that used to be reversed biased. So the motor is actually running at this point and the arm is extending towards the switch. Even once the arm pulls away from the normally closed momentary switch that's inside its housing, the arm continues to move forward. So this is where you've got the four input states and three output states, somewhere one of the output states needs to be doubled.